Welcome back. In this session, we'll continue looking at Jesus' high priestly prayer in John 17. In verse 6 through 19, we see how Jesus prays to his Father for the disciples. Jesus begins this part of his prayer with testimony that the disciples believe and have faith in the one true God, that they belong to him, and that they know Jesus Christ is God incarnate, sent to earth to save humanity. Each prayer we share with God is like a testimony of our belief in Him. Otherwise, why would we pray if we didn't believe it would have some effect? Even though God knows our hearts and sees our faith, we can always include an element of this in our prayers. Express to God what you know about Him, His works, and His promises. When we share our own faith with Him, it is another way to confirm to ourselves what we believe to be true. The gospel is the foundation of the work the disciples would have to do once Jesus ascended to heaven. Without their faith, they would struggle and fail to follow his commands. And Jesus knows this. This is why in the next portion of his prayer, Jesus prays for them to be unified, to keep them from evil as they work in the world and to sanctify them by God's truth. Already, Jesus is showing the disciples that he is their advocate in heaven. He pleads with the Father for, on our behalf, while the Holy Spirit is our advocate here on earth, sent to help us, remind us of Jesus' teaching, and to give us strength to overcome our imperfections and prove our faith. In John 17, 11, Jesus prays, Now I am no longer in the world, but these are in the world. And I come to you, Holy Father. Keep through your name those whom you have given me, that they may be one as we are. Though the disciples will remain in the world once Jesus ascended, they were not of the world because they belonged to Christ. Verse 16. Which is why Jesus asked his Father to protect them. The purpose for this protection is so that the disciples can remain unified. Unity amongst the disciples will not only help them to accomplish a godly mission, but it will also reflect to the world around them that God, as three persons, is perfectly unified in love and wants the same for His creation. This unity is a characteristic of all of Christ's disciples. When we live by the truth of His gospel and are obedient to the will of God, we are unified in our purpose and in our love for each other and Him. In John 17, 14 and 15, Jesus also petitions God, I have given them your word, and the word has hated them because they are not of the world just as I am not of the world. I do not pray that you should take them out of the world, but they should keep them from the evil one. Sometimes, in the midst of hardship, we may wish to be removed from our situation or only live for our future with God in His kingdom. However, Jesus does not ask for His disciples to be delivered from their difficulties and removed from those of this world. God has placed us on, on this earth for a purpose. As his children, we should have a different nature and mindset than those who belong to this world. And while we are here on this earth, our task as Jesus' disciples is to continually bring forth fruit for the kingdom, to do good and serve. As those striving to be not of the world, we do not want to succumb to the evil influences that we often find here. In Jesus' prayer, we see his intercessions for his disciples and are further assured of the protection of our faith from evil by Apostle Paul. 1 Corinthians 10, 13. God is faithful, who will not allow you to be tempted beyond what you are able, but with the temptation will also make the way of escape that you may be able to bear it. 
Jesus knows the way for his disciples to be kept from evil. He prays this for them in the last part of this section of his high priestly prayer. Sanctify them by your truth. Your word is truth. John 17, 17. To be sanctified by God means to be made holy or to be set apart for this, his purposes. Sanctification is not just a one-time event, but rather a lifelong process where we work to remain separate from that which is influenced by evil, while we also continually pursue and grow in that which is godly. We are only able to distinguish good from evil through the truth of God's Word. His word is the standard of truth that we are to test everything against. And in this context, his word is the gospel itself. In verses 18 and 19, Jesus says, As you sent me into the world, I also have sent them into the world. And for their sakes, I sanctify myself, that they also may be sanctified by the truth. For Jesus to sanctify himself means that he follows his Father's will by readily sacrificing himself on the cross. Through his act alone are his disciples able to be justified and then sanctified. It is through Jesus, his life, death, and resurrection that we are set apart from this world and can dedicate ourselves to God. This is the truth of the gospel through which we are sanctified. And we are to live by this truth. As we reflect on this part of Jesus' prayer, we are not only comforted by his petitions for the disciples, but we can also learn from his example. We too can intercede and pray for those around us and in the world who are working for Christ. We can pray that they are able to bear their crosses while still being persistent and tireless in answering God's call. We can pray that they experience the true joy that Jesus experienced and he was obedient to and fulfilled the Father's will. Ultimately, we can pray that they know and remember the words that Jesus prayed over his disciples many years ago. And all mine are yours, and yours are mine, and I am glorified in them. John 17, 10.